German scientists just shattered a world record that could change everything about how we power our planet. Inside a bizarre donut-shaped machine called the Wendelstein 7X, they've achieved something physicists have been chasing for decades, keeping super-hot plasma stable for 43 seconds straight. That might not sound like much, but when you're dealing with temperatures hotter than the center of the sun, every second counts. Picture this. Deep in Germany, there's a machine that looks like it came straight out of science fiction. The Wendelstein 7X isn't your typical fusion reactor. It's something called a Stellarator. And on May 22nd, 2025, it just proved that the dream of unlimited clean energy might be closer than we think. Here's what actually happened. The team at the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics managed to create and maintain a plasma cloud at over 20 million degrees Celsius. Some areas hit 30 million degrees. For perspective, that's twice as hot as the sun's core. And they didn't just create it. They kept it stable and controlled for those crucial 43 seconds while feeding it 90 fuel pellets and blasting it with microwaves. But the real breakthrough isn't just the time or temperature. It's something called the triple product. Think of it as Fusion's report card. You need three things to make Fusion work. Super dense particles, extreme heat, and enough time for them to actually collide and fuse. It's like trying to get a bunch of hyperactive kids to high-five each other while running around at light speed. The denser the crowd, the hotter they are, and the longer you keep them together, the more high-fives happen. What makes this extra impressive is that Wendelstein 7X pulled this off with only one-third the plasma volume of the previous record holder. It's like beating a heavyweight champion while fighting in a lower weight class. Princeton researcher Novomir Pablant put it perfectly. If they can do this for 30 seconds, there's no reason they couldn't sustain it for weeks, months, or even years. Now you might wonder why fusion matters so much. Simple. It's the same process that powers the sun, but we're trying to recreate it here on Earth. No radioactive waste like nuclear fission. No carbon emissions like fossil fuels. Just clean, nearly limitless energy from hydrogen isotopes you can extract from seawater. The secret sauce involves some pretty wild physics. Remember those microwaves I mentioned? They're not just heating the plasma randomly. Scientists use radio waves like invisible hands, pushing particles to incredible speeds. It works like pushing someone on a swing. If you time it just right, small pushes create huge movements. These radio waves can target specific particles, heating them to millions of degrees while driving electric currents that keep everything stable. One fascinating piece of this puzzle is helium-3, a rare isotope that's crucial for certain fusion reactions. Usually, getting helium-3 means either waiting for tritium to decay over 12 years or seriously considering mining expeditions to the moon where it's more abundant. But researchers have found clever workarounds. MIT discovered that adding just a tiny amount, less than 1%, to the fusion fuel and hitting it with focused radio waves boosts particle energies by 10 times. Companies like Helium Energy are taking this even further. They're developing systems that create their own helium-3 by fusing deuterium, basically creating their fuel as they go. No moon missions required. The magic number everyone's chasing is something around 3 times 10 to the 21st power for that triple product I mentioned. Hit that threshold, and fusion becomes self-sustaining, producing more energy than it consumes. We call that ignition, and it's the holy grail of fusion research. What Wendelstein 7X just proved is that stellarators, these twisted, pretzel-shaped fusion devices, can compete with their more common cousins, the tokamaks. While tokamaks look like simple donuts, stellarators twist and turn in complex three-dimensional shapes that naturally create more stable plasmas. The downside, they're incredibly difficult to design and build. The upside, once you get them working, they're much easier to operate continuously. And this breakthrough comes at a crucial time. With climate change accelerating and energy demand skyrocketing, we desperately need clean baseload power that doesn't depend on whether the wind's blowing or the sun's shining. Fusion could provide that as a virtually unlimited energy source using fuel from seawater, producing no long-term radioactive waste and impossible to melt down. The scientists achieved this using some incredible engineering. Those 90 fuel pellets weren't randomly shot in, each one was precisely timed and targeted. 
The microwave heating systems pump megawatts of power into the plasma, but in carefully controlled ways that maintain stability while pushing temperatures higher. Think about what this means for our future. Right now, a typical coal plant might produce a gigawatt of power while pumping out millions of tons of CO2 annually. A fusion plant of similar size would produce the same power using a few kilograms of hydrogen isotopes per day, with helium as the only byproduct. That's the same helium we use in party balloons. The path from this record to commercial fusion power still has challenges. Engineers need to figure out how to extract the heat efficiently, how to breed more tritium fuel, and how to build reactor walls that can withstand the neutron bombardment. But each breakthrough like this one brings us closer to solving those problems. What's particularly exciting is that this isn't happening in isolation. Around the world, fusion projects are hitting milestone after milestone. ITER in France is under construction. Private companies are attracting billions in investment. And now Wendelstein 7X has shown that alternative approaches like stellarators can deliver game-changing results. The real question isn't if fusion will work anymore, instead it's when it'll be ready for prime time. With achievements like this, that timeline keeps shrinking. Some experts now predict demonstration plants by the 2030s and commercial deployment in the 2040s. So, next time someone tells you fusion is always 30 years away, remind them about what just happened in Germany. A machine with a plasma chamber smaller than its competitors just matched their performance while running far longer. If that's not progress, I don't know what is. What do you think? Will fusion finally deliver on its promise of clean, unlimited energy? The evidence keeps stacking up that we're closer than ever. The breakthrough was reported by the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics, with additional insights from Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, MIT researchers, and various fusion energy companies. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.